Uh, this is Ron Paul with your weekly update for June 8th. Last week, General Motors finally declared bankruptcy. Many in government thought $20 billion in taxpayers' dollars would save the company, but as predicted, it only postponed the inevitable. The government will dump another $30 billion into General Motors and take a 60% controlling interest for it. Public officials are now involving themselves in tactical business decisions, such as where General Motors headquarters should move and what kind of cars it will build. The promise that this is temporary and will eventually be profitable is supposed to ease the American people into accepting this arrangement, but it is of little comfort to those who remember similar promises when the American taxpayers bought Amtrak. After three years, government was supposed to be out of the passenger rail business. Forty years and billions of dollars later, the government is still operating Amtrak at a loss. Despite the fact that they have created a monopoly by making it illegal to compete with Amtrak. Imagine what they can now do to what is left of the great American auto industry. In a truly free market, General Motors would get your money one way and only one way, by selling you a car you want at a price you are willing to pay. Instead, the government is giving public money to a private company in spite of the market signals it has been sending. Throwing money at General Motors does not stop it from being an engine of wealth destruction. On the contrary, it simply gives it more wealth to destroy. Had it been allowed to fail naturally, the profitable pieces of General Motors would have been bought up and put to good use by now. The laid-off employees would likely have found new jobs, and all that capital would be in private hands reinvested in companies that produce products demanded by consumers. Instead, we are all poorer now. Political pressure, rather than the rule of law, is deciding how to divide up the remains of General Motors. The bondholders had billions of dollars in retirement savings invested in the company, and though they were entitled to nearly three times as much as United Auto Workers, the bondholders were left with just a 10% stake compared to uh, the union's 17.5% stake. For their 60% stake, taxpayers have a future of constant bailouts to look forward to. Co-mingling public control of private business is known as fascism. While today's politicians may feel emboldened with their new power, history will only repeat itself as all this collapses on itself. It is the height of hubris for bureaucrats and politicians to attempt to control the market and the free will of the American people. In the end, the market wins out. Maybe one day, future generations will wise up and allow free markets to function and thrive without the albatross of government around its neck. For now, it looks like those in charge have not learned the lessons of the past and have doomed us to repeat those mistakes once again. Thanks for calling this update. A new update is placed on this number, 888-322-1414, every Monday morning. The written text of which can be found on my website, www.house.gov/paul under the heading Texas Street Talk. Thanks for calling.